Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and for today's video we are going to talk about access based enumeration. So this was requested recently and I think it's a great topic to talk about because we have been discussing Windows file system, we've done labs on file permissions, NTFS, share, inheritance. Now let's talk about access based enumeration. So before we get started with today's video, if you are new to Windows file system, I highly recommend you to watch the basics of Windows file system, NTFS, and shared permissions and inheritance first before watching this video so you will have a better foundation of how Windows Server handles their file system. Also, if you already know what ABE is and you just want to dive into the hands-on lab and exercises, you can skip the next part for the short lecture about access-based enumeration, how does it work, why it is important, and some examples. And you can go ahead and get started on the hands-on. Okay, so let's get started on a short lecture on what access-based enumeration is all about. Okay, so first of all, what is access-based enumeration or ABE? Access-based enumeration is a feature in Windows Server that hides files and folders from users who do not have permission to access them. ABE hides files and folders from users who don't have access and users only see what they are allowed to open. It's available on Windows Server for shared folders. So why is ABE important? First, it enhances security. Access-based enumeration prevents users from even knowing certain folders exist if they don't have the required permissions. This reduces the risk of unauthorized access attempts and helps protect sensitive information from prying eyes. Next is it reduces user confusion. Without ABE, users might see many folders they can't access. This can be frustrating and confusing, especially in environments with large shared drives. ABE presents a cleaner, more intuitive experience by only showing relevant folders. Next, it also protects privacy of sensitive folders. Departments like HR and Finance may store confidential data. So ABE ensures that folders like HR are invisible to non-HR users, even if they know the path. This helps enforce privacy policies and data protection regulations. Another reason is it limits unnecessary access attempts. Users often click on folders they see out of curiosity even if they don't have access. ABE prevents these clicks entirely by removing temptation. This reduces the number of failed access attempts, logs, and potential alerts. And it also reduces help desk tickets. When users see folders they can't open, they might assume something's broken and submit support tickets. With ABE enabled, they only see what they have permission to use, leading to a fewer, why can I access this folder, queries to IT. Okay, so let's now talk about how ABE works. ABE relies on NTFS and share permissions. It filters the file or folder view based on user access. So if a user has no permission, the folder is hidden. So here's the process flow. First, the user logs in. Next, it tries to access the shared folder. And then permissions are checked. And ABE filters the appropriate view based on permissions. And here are some important notes to consider when using ABE. ABE doesn't change permissions, just visibility. ABE only hides files and folders from users who don't have permission to access them. It doesn't grant them or deny access. It simply prevents users from seeing what they already don't have access to. ABE works only on NTFS volumes. ABE is a feature deeply tied into NTFS permission structure, so it can't function on older or simpler file systems. This is really important to note that ABE is supported only on volumes that are formatted with NTFS and it doesn't work with FAT32 or XFAT or other file systems. Next, ABE doesn't protect files from being accessed if permissions are misconfigured. ABE just hides and it doesn't secure. Always double check your permissions. ABE will not save you from misconfigurations. 
ABE relies on proper NTFS permissions. If you accidentally give a user access to a sensitive file, ABE won't stop them. It will show the file because the system thinks they are authorized. Okay, so before we get started with the hands-on lab, here are the prerequisites. If you want to follow along, make sure you have all of this, especially Windows Server and it can be a VM. Then you need to have file server role installed. You also need one Windows client if you want to test this. And the client needs to be joined to the same domain as the Windows server. You need an ADDS setup and configured. We are also going to create test users and groups in Active Directory. And we are going to create a shared folder to apply the access based enumeration. Okay, so for our real world scenario, we are going to simulate a file server for the HR and IT departments. And you want users from HR to only see HR related folders and IT to only see theirs, even if all of the folders are inside the same shared directory. Okay, so the first thing we are going to do is to set up different users and groups in Active Directory. So go ahead and open Active Directory users and computers. And then depends on what structure you have set up already but under users for example we are going to create two groups hr group and it group so i just had different ous in here categorized by different departments under my users so this will be up to you on how you want to organize this or arrange this but just make sure that you have two groups for this example so under the HR I'm just gonna create a new group so I'm gonna right click and select new and select group I'm just gonna name it HR department and it's make sure it's a security type and global scope so we have one group in here and for IT I'm just gonna use what I already had but if you're gonna create a new one it's the same process just right click new and group and type in the name so I have the two groups that I need IT and HR now we can create users so for example under IT I'm just gonna create a new user in here first name create the logon name and password just uh, uncheck this we don't want to complicate it and password never expires and next to finish so we have created lacos now and let us add lacos to our IT department so we have different ways on doing this we can go to the IT department go to properties members and then add lacos in here and then now lacos is a part of the IT department okay so for the HR department we can add another user so right click new and user and let's type in the name same enter password this and just check this and next and finish and let's add conan to the hr department so another way to add him to that department is go to the username and right click go to properties and under member of we can add the group in here Let's type in HR and it's going to show up the group name and just click on apply and he should be under HR department if we check the members. Conan is here now. So we've done the first step which is to create the user and group and next is we are going to create a shared folder for the IT and HR departments. Okay, so on the Windows server, let's uh, open our file explorer and go to your c drive this is where we are gonna create our shared folder so for example we are gonna name it department shares just right click and click on new select a new folder and then just type in department shares enter and then we want two folders in here under department shares we want one for hr and it so let's just create those folders Okay, so now that we have created the folders, next step is to assign the NTFS permissions on the subfolders. So let's get started with the HR folder. Just right click and click on properties. Go to security tab because this is NTFS permissions. And then as you can see, there's permissions for other groups in here. So if you see users, everyone or authenticated users, we should remove that permission because only HR should have access to this. So 
if we try to edit and remove the users in here for example it's going to show an error that you can't remove it because it is inheriting permissions from its parent because if you remember inheritance for windows file systems it is enabled by default so you have to disable it if you want to remove the inheritance so in order for us to remove the users in here what we're going to do first is to remove the inheritance by clicking on the advanced in here and then disable inheritance and then just select convert inherited permissions and then we can now remove the users in here because we just want hr to access this okay so we can also add the hr group in here okay so click on apply and okay so now we can add the hr group in here and as you can see users has been removed so let's go ahead and add hr group check names and then okay and then let's give them full control because it's their own department folder and then click on apply and okay and as you can see in here if you click on hr department they should have the full control then let's click on okay and then let's do the same for the it folder in here right click go to properties and then security tab and then let's go to advanced first to disable inheritance click on convert inherited permissions and then remove users or everyone or authenticated users if you see them okay and then click on apply and okay and then let's edit to add our it group in here okay let's give it full control as well and click on apply and okay make sure that the IT department has full control in here. So now we have set up the NCFS permissions for the subfolders. Now it's also important to set up the share permissions for the parent folder. So let's go ahead and do the share permissions by right clicking on department shares, go to properties and sharing share permissions is done through the sharing tab in here. Let's click on the advanced sharing and check the share this folder. Okay, so let's go to permissions and then you see everyone in here so let's remove it so there's no more everyone or other users now we can go ahead and type in our hr and it group so let's do hr first and check names and okay and we are fine with them just having read for this department share and then we can just add the it folder next click on okay and make sure it has read also so let's go ahead and click on apply and okay apply and okay in here and then if we check again on advanced sharing and permissions you can see that these groups have been added in here so they will have access to get into department share to go to their own folders okay so the last step for this is to enable abe or access based enumeration and you can do that by opening server manager so you can just type it in and open it okay and on the left side you will see a file and storage services click on that click on shares and then you will see the folder that we created department shares in here and right click on that you will see properties and then select settings on the left side and then you will see in here that we can enable access based enumeration in here and as we talked about earlier, this is in charge of the visibility based on the permissions that were assigned to the folders. So if we check on this, it should apply the ABE on the different files and folders. So it's easy to enable this. Just click on apply and OK. And it should apply to the folders we have created under the department shares for HR and IT. Okay, so let's test if this is working now so let's go to our client machine make sure that you have a client machine that is domain joined to your server in here okay so just to take note that moving forward we should be using windows 11 for our client vms because windows 10 is approaching its end of life so it's better if we start using windows 11 vm for testing okay so we are gonna test with our user account that we just created earlier and i'm gonna get started with conan so conan is a part of the hr department let's just double check on that so if you go to Active Directory users and computers, you can see Conan Doyle as part of the HR department. So he should just have access to the HR folder and not see the IT folder. 
to just go ahead and log him in okay so what we're gonna do next is to access our shared folder so if you have your own lab make sure to type in double backslash and your server name so if you are not sure what your server name is or if you don't remember just go back to your windows server go to go to command prompt and then type in host name to quickly grab the host name so mine is server 01 and i'm gonna use that so server 01 and if you press enter we're gonna see different drives in here and folders so if we go to department shares as you can see conan can only see the hr folder even if there is two folders set up in here hr and it he can only see it because the abe applies on what permission he has so let's click on uh hr and see if he has he has access so he can get into hr and and he doesn't even see it in here so he only gets access to what permission he was set up with okay so let's also make another test in here let's go back to our windows server and go to the hr folder click on it to open it and if we create more subfolders under this for example like contracts and let's see the permissions that it has so let's go to the ftfs permission under security tab so as you can see in here if we click on advanced it has enabled inheritance on this because inheritance is enabled by default in here and we haven't explicitly disabled it yet so as you can see in here it should get and inherited the special permissions for hr that we have set up for its parent folder so it should have the same permissions going forward just the same same as its parent folder HR folder in here so even if we create new folders in here it should have the same permissions and it should only just be accessible to HR if we check under security tab in here okay so let's now go ahead and test the other user we have the IT user Lacos in here so just make sure to double check your IT department in here that they are for this example that it's not a member of domain admins because admins can get into all of the folders that we have set up because we have left the admins permission in here if we can check in here we still have the admins group in here so go ahead to your windows client and sign out your user and sign in your it user and let's go to our shared folders department share as you can see you can only see it in here we don't have the hr folder visible because we have applied abe okay so that's how you use and apply abe on your shared folders if you have any questions please let me know in the comment section down below i hope that you learned something from this video and i hope to see you guys in the next one thank you so much for watching